Hi folks, it's good to be with you. So as I was talking about the cannon, um, so I'll reiterate that again. Um, the canon of scripture, we'll talk about the New Testament in particular. The canon of scripture, um, it's two bulwarks to the defense of the canon. That is the doctrine that God testifies to his own word and then the doctrine of preservation and that can be found in in the um, Westminster Confession and in the Westminster it will give you the scriptural affirmation there secondly uh, thirdly we can see as we look at the early church fathers that 24 of the books right early on through Ignatius, Polycarp and Irenaeus were accepted there was a debate about a few of the books particularly 2 Peter and particularly uh, 3 John and later on the book of Hebrews and mainly because uh, the book of Hebrews was accepted I think in the East but in the West there was debate about it and then there was debate about the book of Revelation early on it was accepted but later because heretics were having fanciful views about the end times some of the early patristic fathers were questioning it because of its use among the heretics um, but basically the 24 books were acknowledged then there was a few books that there was debate about they got acknowledged in the end and were in the New Testament canon because the church was using them and, and God was blessing them but you can see that right early on it wasn't a council that said this book or that book it was already accepted by Polycarp, Ignatius and Irenaeus and Tertullian concerning the, 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 the vast bulk of the New Testament. Uh, we also have the testimony of the Gnostic Gospels. I mentioned this to Mansur and Abbas in the debate with them. That the Gnostic Gospels quote the four Gospels and the four Gospels never quote the Gnostic Gospels showing you the four Gospels were much earlier and more authoritative than the Gnostic Gospels. Then we have the issue of the rubbish dump in uh, the, the, uh, the Gnostic Gospels. When you look at them, they, you, they can be categorized in three, three ways. Philosophy, um, mysticism, and ethicism. So you had philosophy that, that were like Stoic and various other Neoplatonian, well not Neoplatonian, but kind of, yeah, kind of like Platonic kind of philosophy uh, mixed in with the Gnostic writings um, basically talking about eons and different ages which is kind of platonic then you had uh, mysticism where the, the Gnostics used the word secret we have a secret knowledge and then you had an ethicism which talked about being practical and doing good so these were not, they, they, if you read them, that's not what the Gospels were about and, and the New Testament was about the death and resurrection of Christ. So they weren't really um, valuable really and they testified to the New Testament rather than the New Testament testified to the Gnostic Gospels. So those are some of the things there about the New Testament. and. Can I add anything more? Um, yeah, like I said, uh, Bruce Metzer would agree with what I'm saying. I don't agree with everything he says, but in his book on this issue, uh, he basically takes the line of much of what I'm saying, even though I don't agree with everything he says. There are people like Martin Hengel, who recently died, who talks about the inscriptions of the Gospels, and on them, uh, you find that we, we don't have any Gospels without some kind of title. So we always knew that we're Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. We have the Diatasseron, which is uh, an early uh, collection of the Gospels, edited collection, which testify to who wrote it. We have great tradition from Papias to Tertullian to Irenaeus who testified to the four Gospels. 
the geographic uh, spread of the manuscripts that we found testified to the Gospels being widespread, whereas the Gnostic Gospels, we only have a few, and most of them are found in Egypt. So that shows you that they're not really seen as scripture. And then the rubbish dumps, we see the handwriting of these manuscripts in their time were not seen as div divine whereas the handwriting of the four gospels the way they were written they were written in a in a more spiritual way uh, of the time which shows you they were seen as divine and spiritual uh, divine scripture so these are just many many reasons why we can be confident that what we have in the new testament is the word of god now there were apocrypha books which um, like the maccabees and um, Enoch and all these now these books are not in script in the scriptures because they don't what Luther would call the golden thread or the cradle where Christ was laid the New Testament of the Bible is the cr cradle where Christ is laid so the reason why these other books are not in the Bible is because they don't fit into talking about the Messiah and pointing to the Messiah uh, they were put in by uh, the Pope of Jerome's time. Jerome said, don't put them in. Jerome was a Bible scholar, but the Pope put them in. And that's why we have them in the Catholic Bible. But they don't fit into the, 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 the Bible uh, because they're not part of the history of redemption, this golden thread about Christ. So these are some of the things about the canon. And I hope that that's a blessing to you. And uh, I hope that's a help to you concerning the canon. Thank you. God bless you. So we're looking here.